Hello and welcome to Penguin TV. It is recorded by George Eflis, a.k.a. Wiffy Penguin, and you can follow me on Twitter at Wiffy Penguin. Penguin TV is hosted by PureMTGO.com and sponsored by MTGOTraders.com. Get an 8% discount off all orders over $50 when paying with PayPal or credit card. And you can check out KeepYourGames.com and get an extra 20% off when trading paper for digital. Enjoy the videos. Hello everybody and welcome to more Classic 101s. Um, this is the Oath 101. Starting off, we will be looking at the Good Game Variant, or GG. And the reason that we have, that we call this deck Good Game Oath, is the combination of Dragon's Breath and our win conditions. Both of these guys generally win the game the turn that they deal damage, and having Dragon's Breath attach for free out of the graveyard in, uh, as a side effect of activating Oath of Druids gives these guys haste and allows them to swing in for the win the turn that you Oath them up. This is the fastest and most consistent version of Oath out on the internets or in the classic, ma uh, classic format. And let's, let's take a look at what makes Oath of Druids tick. First, it's Oath of Druids. Um, this is, for all intents and purposes, a creatureless combo control deck. I know that there are creatures, but you're not hard casting these guys. So this is, for all intents and purposes, a creatureless combo control deck that seeks to combine Forbidden Orchard and Oath of Druids together to give them a guy to activate Oath of Druids which will allow you to reveal cards until you hit a duder, flip the duder into play, and all the cards you revealed into the graveyard. And some of these will be really good cards, like Dragon's Breath and Ancient Grudge. Um, the nut play for Oath of Druids is this right here. Forbidden Orchard, Lotus Petal, Oath of Druids. That gives you a turn one um, Oath with activation. On your, second, on your second turn before you draw, you'll flip up a guy. Chances are, you'll also flip up a Dragon's Breath, so... that's a nice little thing to see before you even draw your second uh, card for the, the game. The deck is loaded with Brainstorms, Imperial Seal, Demonic Tutor, Vampiric Tutor. These... one, two... three... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cards. These eleven cards right here, you will see in every single deck. Well, not every single deck. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 of the blue combo control decks all play these nine cards, or these cards. Most of them also run a full play set of Lotus Petal as well. These are our, uh, air quote, vintage decks. We've got the best mana acceleration in the format. We've got the best card selection and card filtering in the format. And we've got the default best combination in the game. In between Time Vault and Voltaic Key. Uh, people have seen this in my videos, I know. But the combination of these two cards together will win the game almost every time. The only, the only way that you'll end up losing the game is if you'll draw from an empty library, like if you've Oath too hard, or if you've got a Mana Crypt and you're at low life. You also have access to things like Beast Within or Nature's Claim and Ancient Grudge to get rid of this Mana Crypt. Oh, most of the, almost all of the blue decks also run Tinker. Um, so, yeah, that is the general overview of how Oath of Druids works. This particular version runs with Blightsteel, Emrakul, and Dragon's Breath to win on the turn that it oaths it up. Um, this is my own brew of the deck. It's not something you'll find out on the internets because I built it after the events stopped firing. And you'll notice my three Beast Withins in the main deck. I've said over and over again how much I love this card, and here is an outlet for me. 
um, blowing up any permanent except for Blightsteel or Emrakul, and also giving them a creature so that I can activate out the Druids. This card was... I feel like this card was made for the Oath decks in Vintage and Classic. Um, but yeah, so that is one version, the Good Game Oath. The next pop, most popular or consistent version would be Elephant Oath. Um, I, didn't, I did a video on this list a couple of months ago, on this exact list, but we've got a lot of the same cards that we see in Good Game Oath. We do see a Show and Tell. Now, Show and Tell is because we run three guys. I've constantly said that I do not like Show and Tell with two creatures. Because the chances that you have to waste a tutor to find a guy are a lot more than when you have three guys in your deck. Now, we don't have the speed that the other version, Good Game, has. What we do have is a much better game against Workshop decks. Terastodon and Emrakul are the bee's knees versus artifacts. Um, we also have a little bit of a better game against blue decks with two walkers in the main. Um, this is also an older list. There's no Beast Withins, which I would probably put in here. There's only one Ancient Grudge, which should probably be two. But there are some nifty things like Swords of Plowshares for fish. Um, Sensei's Divining Top, which I'm a big fan of in Classic. We've got uh, a little bit of tech down here with Progenitus against Workshop, Oath, and Fish decks. And also, one of the things I like to do with Show and Tell is to run a fourth target in my sideboard. Because a lot of the times in games two and three, a lot of nature's claims come in, and it's hard to win with Oath of Druids. But the basic game plan is to just get there with Oath of Druids, the same way you would get there in the other variant. But unlike that, there's a little bit more flexibility, there are more decision trees in this deck. Do you blow up their lands? Do you blow up your lands and your Oath of Druids? Um, so, and a little bit more variance, because sometimes you really need Terastodon, and sometimes you really need Emrakul. More of the time you really need Terastodon. That's why there's two and one Emrakul. So 60% of the time you'll get Terastodon and 30% of the time you'll get Emrakul on the first activation. The second activation is 50-50. Not a whole lot different in this list than the good game variant besides the targets. We again have Force of Wills. We have Mana Drains. Uh, I have Steel Sabotages in this list. This list is a little teched out for the Workshop uh, matchup with Sabotage and the Ancient Grudge. Another Ancient Grudge, Nature's Claim. Two Nature's Claim in the main. Um, but yeah, that's this version. And we'll bring up the only other version that's actually placed in an event, which is also Elephant Oath. No, we want to bring up Sun Titan Oath. So I played this list in the very first Classic Daily event, post Masters Edition 4. And the goal with this build, you only have one target in your deck to flip over with Oath of Druids. So you flip over Sun Titan, and when, what Sun Titan does is he can return any of these permanents back into the battlefield. So on your first resolution of Oath of Druids, you would get, one, hopefully you would get one of these cards. If not, you get a land or another Oath of Druids, a Soul Ring, a Mana Vault, but hopefully you would get one of these cards. Most probably you would want to get Time Vault or Voltaic Key. So that on the second iteration, you would get the other copy and scroll rack. But, so you activate once and you get Sun Titan. Then you get one of these cards. You activate on the second turn and mill your entire deck. What this does is it puts Croson Reclamation into your graveyard. It puts Yawgmoth's Will into your graveyard. 
There is no way these cards won't be in your graveyard unless they are in your hand. So, uh, second activation, mill your entire deck. Then you play Croson Reclamation for its buyback cost, or flashback cost. And you would put Yawgmoth's Will in your deck, and any other card. You don't actually even need another card. You draw for the turn, get Yawgmoth's Will. Attack with Sun Titan and put Scroll Rack into play. Play Yawgmoth's Will. Get all of your mana artifacts, a Talarian Academy, and a Jace with access to Force of Will's mana drains, and discard. Then you use Scroll Rack and put one card on top of your deck. Activate Time Vault and Voltaic Key to take an extra turn. Um... Draw one card from your deck, and now you, your deck is at zero again. Activate Scroll Rack, put a card back on top of your deck, attack with Sun Titan, activate Time Vault, draw a card, put a card back on top of your deck with Scroll Rack, attack with Sun Titan, and you win the game. This sideboard is a little wonky. Um, the main deck, because of the way that this combo functions, the main deck needs to have only one creature in it. Because you want to empty out your library as quickly as possible to get that Yawgmoth's Will going. But the sideboard has access to Iona, Tinker, and Sphinx of the Steelwind for problem matchups. As well as some other cards that you would expect to see in the archetype. The last version of the deck that people are trying to kick around with is an Oath of Druids slash Gush Bond engine. So we've got the Oath of Druids plan with a couple of Lotus Petals and Forbidden Orchards. Uh, our win conditions here are Tide Spout Tyrant. So whenever you cast a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. With a Soul Ring and a Mana Crypt, you can create infinite mana. But that's not really what you're going for. What you're going for is just to create Lethal Storm with your deck. And then win via Gush, Fast Bond, into either Yawgmoth's Will, Tendrils of Agony, or a way to find these two cards. It's also got a regrowth, just in case your Oath activation flips something important like Yawgmoth's Will or Fast Bond. And basically what you do is you flip over your Tide Spell Tyrant and then proceed to either bounce their entire board with every card that you play, or generate Lethal Storm with uh, the Gush Bond engine. The nice thing about this deck is that if they're hating on Oath of Druids, you can easily fall back into the Gush plan. The bad thing about this deck is that because it's split, it doesn't do either combo particularly efficiently enough. Um, there are dead cards with Gush, like Forbidden Orchard. There are dead cards for Oath of Druids, like Gush. But it is another way you can go. And I'm sure that there are other archetypes out there. Uh, there's a new card coming out in M12. Rune Scar Demon, I think it is, or Etched Rune Demon. Basically, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer that Demonic tutors when it hits the battlefield. Um, I think it could have some application in Oath of Druids decks. You know, Oath, Oath your guy up, Demonic Tutor for Yawgmoth's Will on Resolution. Seems like it might be pretty good. So that's it for the Oath decks. Um, the way that you want to win is the Nut Draw as I said in the Good Game variant, involves Forbidden Orchard, Lotus Petal, and Oath of Druids. If you don't have this nut hand, a good secondary hand is anything with an Oath of Druids and either a Force of Will or a Spell Pierce or a Mana Drain. You basically wait for them to play a spell, counterspell it, and then try to resolve Oath of Druids when they're tapped out. That's where the controlling aspect of the deck comes into play. If you're trying to beat this deck, the best ways to do it are to have an answer to Oath of Druids in your deck somewhere. 
or you need to be faster than them. Oath of Druids does require that you skip at least one turn. So, if you're on workshops, you need to spear them out before they can get Oath of Druids down, because even if you wasteland their entire board and drop out 1,000 spheres, if they have an Oath of Druids on the table, chances are they will win as soon as they uh, draw a Forbidden Orchard. Combo decks can race Oath, uh, but unfortunately it puts them in an awkward position where they may have to race early because of a turn 1 Oath or a turn 2 Oath, and the Oath deck does have permission of its own. Fish decks seem to be the best build to fight Oath, what with their counter spells and hate bears that affect Oath of Druids with the applied pressure of Wastelands and Beaters. Um, and then in the Oath Mirror, something that not a lot of people realize and something that I found to be correct, other people may argue, what I like to do is take out at least three Oath of Druids and turn it into a straight control deck that can tutor for either Oath or Time Vault. I leave my creatures in, but I take out the Oath of Druids because the matchup is all about Forbidden Orchard. It is not about Oath of Druids. Whoever can stick Forbidden Orchard and keep it there the longest usually will win the game. Um, something you do have to worry about, though, is giving them too many 1-1s and losing to them. But that's something that uh, you learn through give and take with the matchup. But that's it for the Oath of Druids archetype, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with another episode shortly, or another archetype shortly.